Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Norway Chess 2023. This is a super tournament being held in, you guessed it, Norway, where there is a classical portion of the game worth three points, but if the game ends in a draw, the players go to an Armageddon where black has three minutes less, but a draw is a win in the Armageddon portion. Very confusing. And in the last few videos, a lot of you were complaining about my intro being long. Well, today it's not gonna be long. Today we have El Clasico. We have Hikaru Nakamura, playing Magnus Carlsen. This is their first game of classical chess in 1300 and something days. Since 2019, these two have not played against each other in a classical chess tournament over the board. They have played Rapid, they have played Blitz, and I think they've played Bullet. They have not played classical chess. So here we go. And I will show you this game first. I will also show you an, uh, a game between two of the young superstars and a massive game afterward, uh, which features a major update to the standings and also to the world top five ELO list. Hikaru sits down and plays the move E4. Magnus responds E5. Knight F3, Knight C6, and we have a Spanish. Now, Magnus likes to play A6, and then he likes to not play d6. He likes to do this, knight f6, and now Hikaru has an option to play an anti-marshal, which is d5. Uh, marshal being the pawn going to d5 in one go, but he castles, now bishop e7. Now, now Hikaru can again, uh, in this position, play all sorts of different things. He can play a4, he can play h3, he can play uh, a lot of different lines, d3, which, you know, were all kind of in some capacity surveyed in the World Championship, but Hikaru plays c3. And that is an invitation for Magnus to play d5, which is called the Marshal. And the Marshal with black is essentially death to chess. Like... The marshal completely neutralizes everything that white wants. Because black sacrifices the center pawn, plays pawn to c6, and is going to line up the cannons this way. Bishop d6, queen, uh, bishop f5, queen h4, giving up the bishop with queen h2 to come. Hikaru goes here. Knight d2, trying to go knight, you know, knight e4. Knight goes to e4. Now, Magnus forces a trade of queens, and it looks like if white just gets a couple more moves to consolidate, he's simply winning. Like, for example, if it was white's move here, he can just play f3, and then he'll play bishop d2. He can also obviously take this bishop, but, you know, point is that he is, uh, well, first he would play bishop h6, so that the rook is defended, but knight d6. Um, but f5, and uh, here come the pieces. Take, 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 take. Sacrificing the bishop, check, and in this position, the player's repeated moves, and made a draw. How do we feel about that as spectators? Purely as spectators. I'm... I don't know what the right word is. I, you know, obviously, I want the two most popular chess players in the world by far. I'm not a chess player. I'm a content creator. I want them to go, you know, blood, sweat, and tears for four hours. However, you know, this is an interesting kind of conundrum, right? So Hikaru plays e4. And the thing about chess is that it's a silent conversation. Hikaru plays e4 because Magnus a game ago played the French. So Hikaru's thinking he might play the French or the Sicilian, but there is a chance that he plays e5. Now, Hikaru claimed that it was a bit of a surprise, right? Now, if we're going here, we know what Magnus wants, but Hikaru might be thinking Magnus is not going to try to force a draw. He'll probably go for something more ambitious. But c3 is virtually a draw offer at this level of chess. I mean, it, 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 like, it just is. These, these players, they know their theory. C3, D5 is just, like, the, the board is dead. So Hikaru goes to an Armageddon. That's what Hikaru tries to do. He tries to angle for an Armageddon. 
and he gets 10 minutes to 7. And clearly, this was part of the match strategy. But I am, you know, I'm, I am admittedly disappointed. Now, 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 if, if we can just get ex existential for a moment, does this just mean that, like, classical chess is, like, I don't know, dead for this matchup? Like, we're not going to get Hikaru Magnus in classical. We're just not. We're going to get it in rapid. We're going to get it in blitz, in bullet. And that's really where it is, El Clasico. But... I guess we're just not going to get it, you know? I, I, that's that's just... And who knows? Maybe if they play in a tournament in the future and there is no Armageddon, they, we will get a game. But this was, you know, I, I was like, oh. I did not expect this, honestly. Um, but that's all to say that the Armageddon begins. Black starts with three minutes less. And we get another Hikaru Magnus game. The first one was not much of a game. And Hikaru, I am not joking, plays the King's Gambit. This man, Hikaru... Sat down across from Magnus Carlsen, played a King's Gambit. Yo, I do not know the last time that Magnus Carlsen was on the black side of a King's Gambit. I'm not even exaggerating. In fact, if you give me 30 seconds of time, I am going to go to chessgames.com. I am going to type in player is Carlsen. And I'm going to type in King's Gambit. Can I even see that? E4, E5... King's Gambit. Fine chess games. Magnus Carlsen has had the King's Gambit played against him twice ever. Ever! And the last time that that happened was in 2004. This man hasn't had a King's Gambit played against him in 20 years! <laughs> I mean, you got to give Hikaru credit for, for being theatrical. Pawn takes f4. The King's Gambit is a very dangerous opening for both sides. White sacrifices a pawn and, and all of this, but tries to get d4, bishop f4, knight c3. Now, Magnus plays the critical line, which is g5. Basically just saying, I'm posing an existential threat to your position with g4 and pawn takes f3 and queen h4. Hikaru plays h4, g4. And now in this position, white has this line, knight g5, and knight takes f7, but that line is garbage. Uh, there is also some lines where you can play like bishop c4 and you can sacrifice, but uh, I think before you play that, you have to go here and then castle. Uh, and I think this is called the Muzio Gambit. I think basically here you play uh, this, and then this is like the Giga Muzio Gambit or something. But Hikaru plays knight e5, and... Just pawn to d6. And Magnus is, plays this move in one second. In one second. He, like, and d6 is not a popular move. Knight g4, and now Magnus just plays knight f6. Just plays it normal. Look at this. One second being used. d6. Look at this. Magnus spending no time at all. Magnus acting like, you think you can surprise me? I'm going to spend one second on every single one of these moves. That's ridiculous. And now, here comes a position from the opening where now the players are on their own. Hikaru plays d3. Magnus develops his knight, and, a, and according to the computer already, Hikaru chose the wrong way. In fact, as you can see from Hikaru's last move, 30 seconds spent, he's out of whatever, I guess, bookkeep... I, I don't know, right? Like, I, 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 it's not so clear to me. I think the surprising move was definitely d6, and then the follow-up of just very cold, cool, calm, and collected. Um, you know, it was definitely a risk. And now, all of a sudden, the knight is coming, and so is the bishop. So Hikaru has to preemptively slide out of the way. He spends two minutes on this move. Two minutes. All right? That's a lot of time. It's not exactly two minutes. One minute and 50 seconds, whatever. But all of a sudden, here come all of Magnus's pieces. Like nothing. The bishop is out. The rook is out. He's, he's no longer even down three minutes on the clock. Carl plays bishop d2. Both sides castle. And now Magnus does something funny. Keep in mind, a draw in Armageddon is a win. If you win the Armageddon, you get one and a half points. So, so Magnus offers a queen trade. And this part cracked me up. Hikaru thinks, plays queen e1, <laughs> and Magnus slides back to e5, and he slides back to e5 because if white plays queen f2, which is the best move, he's just going to threaten a repetition. You cannot threaten a repetition. A repetition is a draw. But in Armageddon, you can threaten a repetition. So Hikaru has to play knight e2. And here comes Magnus with f5, but apparently f5 is the wrong pawn break. Apparently, the right pawn break was d5, because then white does not have the pin here because of checkmating possibilities. And if you play bishop c3, I shut the door. And if you play bishop d2 back, I play f3. So f5 allows this 
And the problem is, if you play bishop g7 in this position, you no longer have d4 because pawns from the sixth rank cannot go two ranks forward. So Hikaru is back in the game. Take, take, queen f5. Now Hikaru has to play bishop h3. He thinks for a bit and he plays knight g3, which is inaccurate. It's inaccurate. He was supposed to play bishop h3 and he was supposed to go for this exchange. This is what was preferred by the big SF, not San Francisco. That place is trash. But uh, this is what was preferred. Unfortunately, we have queen f7, and uh, Magnus just backs up out of the position. You have to be very careful taking this pawn because black is just playing queen a2 and queen a1. So Hikaru plays here, and now Magnus takes over. Pawn takes d3, pawn takes d3. Not only is Hikaru's position in dire straits, he's also down on time. And he started this game up three minutes, which is a lot. Knight e4, Magnus calmly, king b8, five seconds spent, plays defense on the a7 pawn, and here come the black pieces. Rook e2, bishop a2. You might be wondering, why didn't Hikaru stop bishop a2? Because of knight takes d3. Knight takes d3 and bishop b4. So Hikaru, king slides over, he's down a pawn, and Magnus brings his pieces to the queen side and ends the game in style, swarms the black king with everything he's got, wins the rook for the knight, bishop d3. If queen takes, then queen f4 and queen g4. If this, a very flashy move to end the game. A man after my own heart, Magnus Carlsen, sacrifices the rook on e2. This is hardly a sacrifice. If bishop takes, it's either checkmate or... Queen c2 and c5 check. And if rook e2 check and you take the bishop, it's discover check and a move. Queen d1, rook c2, and I pick up the queen and I pick up the knight. And Hikaru resigned. Can I just say something? I mean, I am, I, I'm not like a backseating fan. I was a little underwhelmed, you know? I, like, they were done within 50 minutes with both games. Like, I was streaming today, and I thought, okay, it's going to be three, four-hour Hikaru Magnus. Okay, that game was over. I was like, all right, it's going to be Hikaru knows what he's doing. You know, I trust the captain. And then, I don't know. As a spectator, I was just like, oh, well, that was, all right. <laughs> it's over. That's it. Now, I don't know the next time they're going to play each other. Title Tuesday. That was it. Like, that was the whole match. I... The good news is, some of you are going to click off because you only care about Hikaru Magnus, but you're going to miss some really sexy stuff. All right, you're going to, I mean, seriously, we're about, to, we're about to see some fireworks. And we have a new number three in the world. So, whatever, we'll let those people depart. We have a matchup of gangsters, Nodjerbek Abdusatorov and Ali Reza Feruja. Nodjerbek plays d4, we have a Slav defense. We have a semi-Slav Miran variation, main line. All right, both guys just preparing their forces for battle, nothing special, blah, blah, blah. Pawn trade. Bishop is open, good control of e4. Rook b1, with the intention of playing b4 and b5 and rook b3. Now, Feruja plays a5, stopping that. And then he plants the knight confidently into the center of the board. Now, the computer does, in fact, think that what, there is some advantage here for white. Uh, but, I, but I've always liked black's prospects in this position. The close center, the possibility of attack, knight f6, c5. Bishop can always come around. And yes, rook e6 and c5. These two very important moves are setting up good prospects for black in the future. And here, Nodjibrek played dc5. And Feruja did not take back. In this position, Ali Reza played d4. Utilizing the pin on the queen and opening this. Now, that's mate in one. Okay, that's just purely checkmate. So, white plays queen to g4. All right? Trying to trade the queens. Um, the queen slides back to e7. Queen slides back to e7 because on his last move of queen g4, trying to trade the queens, Nojibrek exposed himself a little bit. Not like actually, then he would have gone to Norwegian jail, which is probably pretty nice, but still not worth going to. He exposes the queen uh, to various knight e5s. Okay, now the, now the knight comes here, queen a2, and c6. c6 is a, is a move played in a very natural state. If bishop takes, rook takes, black is going to play rook takes f5, right? So we have rook c6, and you're going to take back my bishop because you just gave up a bishop. Wrong. In this position, Ali Reza Feruja plays as Zwitschenzuk. Feruja is living in France, playing in Norway, but knows his German. Pawn takes e3, Zwitschenzuk. The bishop can be taken in a moment. 
It can be taken in a moment because pawn takes f2 is a massive threat. So white has to go here. And Ali Reza emerges with very good attacking prospects. Rook c1, rook e8, queen b6, now knight comes in. I told you a long time ago, I really liked black's attacking prospects here. And Firuja's got the word fear in his name. He strikes fear into his opponents. You add an e to fear, what do you get? Fire, fire on the board. I'm spitting and this man's got his opponents quitting. Rook d1 and my man says, you wanna attack my queen? You wanna attack my queen, Nodjerbeck? Knight takes f2! Take that sucker. If you take the queen for free, knight h3, check and mate. Boom, headshot. Dead. You attack my queen, and I take a pawn, and it's not even a check. You point a gun at the queen. Just make one subtle movement. You can't take the queen. Because then I take your monarch's head with me. Knight takes f2 is the end of the illusion of safety that is gazing over the white position. There is no safety. It's only danger. And Ali Reza is the danger. Rook e8, queen e8, it's just a pawn, right? It ain't just a pawn. The rook is hanging, discovered check is on the way. So he gives up the queen. Here's the problem. The only way to successfully fight off a queen is to have really good peace coordination. Have pieces that work together really well and have no weaknesses. Let me tell you something right now. This is not the sign of a position that has no weaknesses and that has good coordination. The black queen is about to ravage the position. Here comes pawn to f5. The second the knight moves, it becomes a target. It becomes a target. The white position absolutely disintegrates. g5, king g7, and Ali Reza Firuja marches forward, isolates the weaknesses, removes them from the board, suffocating the white position, and sacrifices his queen two times in the same game! Queen f2, queen h2, queen f1, and if you take, you can't stop this and this. Filthy. Absolutely filthy. Ali Reza, dust off the hands. I mean, take a shower. What the, what even was that? With the black pieces, I may add, against the 27, 30 feet every rated player. And if you thought that was special, you ain't seen nothing yet. Fabiano Caruana versus Ariantari. Sem uh, Queen's Gambit declined. G6 to try to go Bishop F5 and maybe Bishop E7 later. Bishop E7. There it is. Life is good. This is the position. And in this position, Fabiano Caruana can castle. Fabiano Caruana can also castle this way. How do you know which way to castle in chess? Sometimes you don't castle at all. Sometimes when your opponents have committed their king earlier than yours, you can actually use that to your advantage if certain conditions are met. In this case, the white king is completely safe and white has a free hand to start attacking on this side of the board. And he does. He's just knocking on the door, just making sure somebody's home. Just making sure somebody's home. Tari reacts instantly and tries to counterattack. Control chess from Fabiano, keeping the king in the center. Fabi can go that way, he can go that way. Or, or the king can just take a walk. Just take a little walk to F1. And maybe he'll go G4 or G3, and maybe the king will camp out on G2. King's just going on a little camping trip. He doesn't want to go to one house, doesn't want to go to the other house. Sometimes you just want to spend an evening in the wilderness. Watch the stars, listen to the animals, get eaten by a bear. I don't know whatever you're into. Rook c8, take, take, pawn to g3, and king to g2. Fabiano's in no rush. Fabiano Caruana is a world championship caliber player. He knows how to set the pace of a game. And right now, just the mere threat of the black king is good enough. He can open up the center and pressure on d5. How is Fabiano going to actually do something here? He's going to put his knight in the center of the board, but now what? He's going to inch forward, Fabi. 
It's gonna inch forward ever so slightly. Queen f3. Fabi is not concerned about replacing the knight with a pawn because the pawn on d5 will fall. He's not concerned. Now black has to play defense. Black plays rook e5. Yeah, that does defend the pawn. Yes, it does. But guess what? Remember how you could have made me put a pawn in the center? That offer's done. There is no offer anymore. Now the pawn is hanging yet again, and I'm rotating over this way. And I'm rotating over this way because, yes, I might go knight d5, but I also might brutalize your king. Rook f5, knight f4. I now have four pieces staring at d5. That's a whole lot of pressure. Tari, to his credit, reacts the best way, which is removing the knight from the board. But now he does not react the best way. He has to go knight e5 in this position. Instead, Tari puts his queen on g5. A simple queen e2. And the pawn has fallen. The pawn has fallen because queen e4 just doesn't work. You have f3, queen e6. He consolidates the knight in the center. Queen back to c8. And in this position, for the second time in today's recap, a man has given up his queen. Pawn takes f5. He gives up his queen. Zwischenzug, f6 check. I just told you. You can fight against the queen if you have very good peace coordination and no weaknesses. And if you had played this move, you would have lost all your advantage. All it takes is one pawn. But by playing the move f6, not only do you preserve the pawn, but you also drastically weaken all long-term prospects for the black king. And I got news for you, that king ain't surviving long. He anchors the knight in the center of the board. He allows queen f3 check. And black resigns. Because you cannot stop Mate, Fabiano Caruana just made beating one of the best grandmasters in all of Europe relatively straightforward. I don't even know what to say. And after three rounds of action at Norway Chess, my friends, Fabiano Caruana leads the pack. He won one matchup in Armageddon and he's won two in Classical. Three, three, and one and a half. Seven and a half points. Firuja in second. Hikaru! Looking nice and dandy up there in third place. He has scored points in every single matchup. He has a classical win and two Armageddon losses, but he's still got five points. So, a lot to play for. A lot to play for here, and a big win for Hikaru in the classical. Still has him in third place in the event. But my goodness, the games today were spectacular. I hope you enjoyed them. Now get out of here.